factory to factory, it's 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 a multiplication of both simplicity and scale. So uh, yeah, we're we're excited about where it's headed. Yeah, and I, I think um, you know once once we are fully integrated, um, I think we we still do see a path for forty six eighty across semi Cybertruck and potentially Model Y in twenty twenty three, and I have a follow up place. Wow. Okay. Well, the, the a semi doesn't use the forty six eighties. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, we, we are making uh, Model Ys. Um, some of the Model Ys coming out of uh, Giga Texas are uh, 4680. Um, and I think through the car you drive around is 4680. Yep. Model Y. 10,000 miles. 10,000 miles. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, no problems yet. Yeah. Structural pack. Structural pack. Yeah. So, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, our, our, and our output of 4680 is growing exponentially. So, um, but it's worth bearing in mind that like, there are, are, are entire highly competitive companies that are very smart that all they do is make battery cells. This is, this is simply one segment of Tesla. Yeah. So, yeah, of course, you know, so, so we'll be handing over our first production Tesla semis um, to Pepsi on December 1st. Um, I'll be there in person. And um, we will be begin ramping up uh, production of the Tesla semi, which is a um, max load heavy, a heavy, a heavy truck. Yeah, that's a class A truck. Class A truck. No sacrifice to cargo capacity. Yeah, no sacrifice. Exactly. No sac- very important. No sacrifice to cargo capacity. 500 mile range. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm just to be clear. Right? 500 miles with the cargo. Just, yeah, 500 miles with the cargo yeah. on, on level ground. Yes, yeah, sir. You know, <laughs> so, not, not, not up, you know. So, um, but, the, but the point is, it's a, a long range truck, and, and even with heavy cargo. Um, and the number of times people tell me, oh, you, you can't, it's impossible to make a long range, uh, heavy duty Class A truck. Um, and then I asked, well, well, what are your assumptions about what out kilogram and what hours per mile? And they would look at me with a blank stare and then say hydrogen. <laughs> I'm like, no, that's, that's not the answer. That I was looking for numbers. Um, <laughs> and literally, <laughs> that's, that's not a number. There's an element on the VR table. Um, anyway, you obviously don't need hydrogen for heavy trucking. That's what we're trying to make here. Um, and we'll be ramping up uh, semi production through next year. Uh, as, as you know, like everyone knows at this point, uh, it, it takes you know, about a year to ramp up production. So we, we expect to see significant. Um, uh, we're, we're, we're tentatively aiming for 50,000 units in 2024 for um, Tesla semi in, in North America. And, and uh, obviously, we'll expand beyond North America. Um, and, and these would sell. It's, I don't want to say the exact prices, but they're much more than a passenger vehicle. So <laughs> 50,000 uh, heavy trucks of this nature would be worth several uh, model lines. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, what is the progress of the 4680 cell ramp and what factors determine whether vehicles get 2170s versus 4680 cells? This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. As you heard from Elon, the 4680 will not appear initially in the Tesla Semi. Obviously, it is coming up and being uh, presented in the 46, uh, in the Model Ys that are 4680s uh, currently, and that won't change for a while. I have to say, I'm a bit surprised. By the way, thanks for joining our channel. If you enjoy the show, please join us on Patreon. We also wanted to encourage you to like and subscribe if you would. So I have to say that there are a few surprises here. First, I thought the delay in the semi was primarily focused on the fact that there's a weight challenge that they were having in getting full loads on the semi with the 2170 battery. Turns out, uh, according to Elon, they can get the full 500 miles on a flat surface fully loaded uh, from the 2170 battery uh, without any issues. 
So this does bring up the question, if you're doing this with a 2170, what's changed in the last five years or four and a half years that resulted in this long delay? And that question wasn't posed, but it's good to get a good sense for what's going on. I also am wondering about the choice of shipping chips is a lot less weight in a tractor trailer than a trailer full of water or soda or some other liquid. So the suggestion that was made by one of the Pepsi executives is that he thought that the delay in delivery of the vehicle was related to um, the cost of carrying large amounts of water or the weight related to that affecting its viability off the semi. So we are kind of fascinated by what's going on and often try to do anything new that we have on the semi so it can get in front of you as thinking points. The last item I wanted to point out, and I think we're going to do a separate show for this, is to focus on, there's a mystery question, which is there's a lot of footage of not only having semis at the facility for, for at Frito-Lay and they're blocked off, but also we now have employees from uh, Pepsi that are actually from an external view doing at least minor adjustments, tires, uh, tire pressure, et cetera, that we can see on the vehicle. And this is a first, uh, we've never seen uh, any other technicians other than Tesla employees, if you will, dealing with the truck. So it is nice to see uh, trained people getting opportunity to work with uh, the vehicle out and away from Tesla. And this leaves the potential for it to uh, enter a wider audience over time. Excellent question, and I know you're gonna ask it, which is, well, wait a second. If we can see four to six vehicles already at uh, the Pepsi facility, why is it that those, um, the whole delivery discussion doesn't happen now? Well, the answer is um, those vehicles will often have a lot of sensors on them as part of the break-in process. And once uh, those break-ins are done, they'll remove sensors so it's possible that vehicles currently in the handle of pep Pepsi can be recategorized from being beta vehicles into becoming actual delivered vehicles that are fine. It's just that we don't know if they're going to do that with these vehicles, but we do expect them to meet the December 1st deadline that was described by Elon and that he's going to be there and the vehicles will be known to be running fine because they've been sitting there for at least three, if not six to nine months in the hands of Pepsi. So I think this is all good news relative to what's going on. The last bombshell, as you heard, is that Elon, in a year or so, plans to be at about 50,000 uh, semis a year in the United States produced, which is pretty impressive. His description is um, it ends up being three model wise. So I guess the price point at 150 to 200,000 kind of fits the revenue hit. And if in fact they can get $50,000, 50,000 units produced per continent, that's pretty significant, impressive and substantial for the company. So I think that this is gonna definitely encourage the analysts to go back and after the, seeing the vehicles actually get into customer hands, um, add this estimate to the revenue forecasted for Tesla. At any rate, we look forward to revisiting some other developments from uh, this meeting, and we thank you for taking the time to join us today. Just a reminder on our health tip for today, uh, back stretches every three to four hours, standing up, putting hands on uh, behind you, above your waist, and doing backward bends as a way to improve back health uh, by backward stretches is a great idea. Thanks for joining us. We look forward to your comments. This is Greg for Tesla Fan Insight. Tschüss, au revoir. Lahit wrote, Hoda hafez, tada zi jenni hao ma, kamawa. Have a great day and walk good.